So why orthogonal array? So this uh, orthogonal array technique, it actually helps us to test uh, the pairwise combinations of all the selected parameters. Uh, normally uh, during testing, it is um, normally observed that when you have your test data, you test your test data individually. Uh, you don't see any errors, but when you combine certain test data parameters and you test the application, uh, you are bound to get some errors or you get some errors when, once you perform the test. Uh, the reason because uh, errors or defects, they don't occur independently. They normally occur when they, when they are integrated or when they are, when a pairing is done between those data. So then only we are bound to get some errors. So in orthogonal array, uh, it helps us in creating uh, a concise test set uh, with very few test cases. Uh, then testing all the combinations of all the variables, which would consume most of your time. Normally, uh, when we have a combination testing, uh, at times this task is uh, performed uh, manually in order to perform the pairs and then perform the test. But in this scenario, uh, this tool, it actually helps us in forming the pairs. And when you form the pair with the help of the tool, uh, there's a very less possibility of errors in those combinations. Whereas in manual way, uh, we are bound to make mistakes or we are bound to skip certain scenarios or combinations in that. Uh, this, uh, it also creates a test set that has an even distribution of pairwise combinations which are as per the system under test or application under test. So it is similar to generate uh, and is less error prone and test sets which can be generated manually uh, which requires certain accuracy. Uh, orthogonal array, it gives the effectiveness, uh, effective test cases to be executed sometimes. It may also list the number of test cases that, uh, that one may identify manually. So this is one of these are one of the reasons why we would need orthogonal arrays. So now let's jump in to see how this can be. So here's how uh, we would be performing the uh, steps for using the orthogonal array. We'll decide how many independent variables will be tested for the interaction. Say at times, uh, for, say as an example, if you take an example of a reporting of a report, uh, in which in order to get the report, you would need certain filters or certain parameters through which you can apply the filter and get the result. Uh, request uh, required results. So in this scenario, uh, you will, uh, for designing a report, you will know which parameters are, so you'll, you'll know which parameters are normally uh, uh, required for testing. So in that, this will map to your factors. Factors will be the um, horizontal, uh, the various columns that would have all those variables in it. And we'll decide the maximum number of values, the values in which uh, these are very independent to each other, and this will map to the levels of this array. And in order to find a suitable orthogonal array uh, with the smallest number of runs, we arrange it in a grid format, wherein it will give us an array format like this. I'll just so 
So this is the one which I'm, I was referring to. We'll have the factors, which is the columns, the various columns in it. And we'll have the levels in it. So levels are something which will have the values in it. Say, for example, for testing the reporting uh, for a report, you have the various variables in it. And in that variables, you have a filter criteria. Say, the level will map to the filter value. and the factor will map to the attribute and each combination of the factor and level will correspond to a run so this will correspond to one test scenario or to one test conditions uh, of yours so once you have done that uh, you also choose the values of any left or levels as well and then what you do is you then copy all this into the form of a in a sample txt file and what we do here is we make use of a small utility which is named as all pairs so all pairs is a very uh, it's, a, it's a free form tool and it is used uh, it, it uses the orthogonal array approach and we can just uh, use it uh, in order to get the required uh, orthogonal array result so once we have all the data the excel data transposed in an txt file we access the tool uh, through a command prompt and if you see just an example in below the point number 7 i have just updated a, a sample uh, path that is d colon whatever your folder name then the all pairs dot exe then you should mention the sample dot txt file and then a greater than sign and you should update an output file name that would be in the form of a text so once you uh, enter this path and you click on enter you'll get a sample output uh, which can be used for the you know to perform the combinations or to get the end results So uh, I'll, I'll show you one example in the slide, in the coming slides. Uh, but before proceeding to that, let's uh, let's consider certain the key points before uh, getting into the actual samples. Uh, you should ensure that uh, the the chosen test scenario will be tested at all the levels, and you should also identify the factors and levels that should be done by people with some the system or domain knowledge whatever your test data or what your attributes uh, that you need to perform it you need to use to test your application uh, these anomalies should be identified by some person who has very much experience into their domain or very much well versed with the tool uh, system or domain knowledge should be coupled with OA competence and that is the knowledge of the level, the factors, the result analysis as well. So the person should be very knowledgeable in order to interpret the output results. Uh, identify Identification of a suitable test scenario is a key factor. And uh, there are some situations where OA techniques are not applicable, such as uh, some processes which involves factors which are variable in time. So there, I don't think it would be applicable. But in, of course, uh, in software testing, uh, this would be applicable. But in at times where um, some auto auto ID would be generated in the tool, some ID which gets automatically generated uh, with reference to certain time or some in some point or some instance of time. So therein, we cannot use that parameter for the OA technique. Um, it is normally applicable to a black box testing. And there's one misunderstanding with this is uh, with this approach is that it uh, that it helps in reducing the number of test cases, uh, but this is not always the case. Uh, it depends upon the combinations or the number of factors that you are using and the number of levels. So we'll have a brief understanding uh, of this in the next coming slides. So I'll just take you to an example. So consider this example uh, in which we have a 4 by 3 array. Uh, that is, we have some four factors and with three levels in it. 
So in order to test this, uh, what we need to have, we need to perform some exhaustive tests and in order to perform this, we need to have at least 81 combinations or 81 test cases uh, that would be 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. So this will be 4 times 3. Um, so you will get around 81 combinations of your test cases. So uh, ideally, um, I don't think that we, we would actually need this or we would actually would require uh, this much of uh, combinations to test it or the time won't permit uh, to perform all these 80, 81 test cases. Say this example is just for a 4 by 3 array. Uh, consider an ex uh, example in which you have a 10 by 10 or something like that array. So in which the case combinations would be more than 1000 or so. So due to the time constraint, I don't think it would be possible to uh, test up such an array. So what we do is we give this result uh, as an input uh, to the orthogonal array in the all pairs tool and we get the result as below. If you see we, it gives us only 10 combinations wherein each of the parameter has a pairing of 6 wherein the last column pairing it shows that 6 times this combination is if you test this 6 combinations would be tested. So this is how uh, this OA works on. If you are able to um, catch hold of the OA results in the Excel sheet, so you'll better understand uh, because the pairing details are given below the Excel sheet, which I am not able to sh include in this slide currently. But if you just if you can just uh, open the output file in an Excel, you're able to see the combinations. Just move on. Um, so this is as for the industry's uh, standard within saving and optimization charts. Uh, so what we have is the levels or the parameters. So if you have these are the number of levels. So with two parameters, what they say that it would be saving of around just zero. And with two, three parameters, what you have is around 50 percent of saving. So this is how, uh, so as, as the parameter uh, increases, so as with reference to that, uh, these are the savings that you would be able to get. These are, uh, these are just the industry standards. Um, these are, I have received it from uh, one of the portal wherein they have updated the savings for the orthogonal array which are achieved 